Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome again to church this morning. What a great time we just had in worship. <laughs> Thank you, Healing Stream. The Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Uh, this morning, by the special grace of God, we go right into the Word and uh, have some good time together. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we give thanks to you this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. You are worthy to be praised. You are God all by yourself. You are God, King Etana, Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the living world, the living water. You are the living breath. You are the word of life. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. There is none like you. There is none to be compared with you. Because you created all things. And you yourself, none who even create anything close to what you've created. We acknowledge you this morning. We say what Proverbs in 3, 5 said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and we shall lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways we acknowledge you this morning, and you will direct our path. We thank you because the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth, shineth, shineth unto the perfect day. We give you praise this morning. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that you called us your own. You did, you did before the foundations of this earth. You have called us to glory and virtue. Ephesians 1, 4, we give you praise this morning. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to... Uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Uh, I still want to key into our worth for this month. This month has been declared a month of prevailing and advancing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This month has been declared to be a month of prevailing and advancement. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, it said, Beloved, uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, sorry, not 1, uh, one 4 verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have what? I've overcome them, whatever them is to you. The Bible says you have overcome them. I don't know what them is to you. Whatever them is to you, you have overcome them. Because greater, greater is he. Greater is he that is in you. I want to say that again. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You remember the story of Elijah with the, the prophet of Baal. When they came to the place where they want to offer sacrifice of worship, they began to call upon Baal. They called from morning through the afternoon and to the evening. And suddenly Elijah came to them and said, oh, maybe he's sleeping. Wake him up. Maybe he's on a journey. Wake him up. Our God is ever alive. You can call him any time of the day. He will hear and answer. So the Bible says greater is he. That is in you. But I want to read something from the rendering of the New Living Translation. Of First John chapter 4 verse 4. It says, but you belong to God. My dear children, you have already won. <laughs> you have already won. 
a victory over those people. Like I said, whatever them is to you. Say so you have already won over those people because the spirit who lives in you, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God, is greater. Is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. This is what we celebrate because we've won. We're going to see a man this morning, the man called David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 was one of those scriptures that was read to us last week. David and Goliath. I'm sure children remember those stories from Sunday school. We remember David and Goliath. So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I believe from uh, verse 40. And we go. But the key passage here is verse 50. Hallelujah. Remember you belong to God. You and I belong to him on the ground and basis of our relationship with him. We belong to God because we have a relationship with God. We have a close relationship with God unlike other religion. You can't even see that God that you're talking about. Talk more of having a relationship with him. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. Wow. For he had no sword. So let's go to verse 40. And we see a little bit of what David did. Now remember before David has to face Goliath. He faced the lion. And he faced the bear. Okay, everybody is uh, quiet this morning. Before he withstood or stand against Goliath, he faced the lion and the bear. For us, we don't have to do anything because Jesus did it for us. We're just walking and living in victory. But you have to know it. You have to know it. You have to convince yourself. Know it. See what David did. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with a shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. <laughs> David didn't do this on his own. Let's go to 1 Samuel 16 verse 13. You see why David was able to do what he was doing. Because he had something on the inside of him. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. When David was anointed in the presence of his brothers. Look at what happened. So as David stood there among his brothers. Samuel took the flask of oil, olive oil. He had brought and anointed David with oil and what and the spirit of the lord came what oh hallelujah and the spirit of the lord came upon him powerfully upon david from that day on from that day on from the day we accepted jesus as our lord and savior and the Holy Ghost took place, take hold of our lives. Our life is never the same. You have to believe it. Because if you don't believe it, it's not going to work for you. When blind Bartimaeus called to Jesus, he was only asking for one thing. Jesus said, what do you want? He said that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, receive your sight and your faith has made you whole. The woman with the issue of blood, she made up her mind. She needed one thing. Because she has gone through many things in 12 years. All the money she ever had. Spent all. She spent everything. But she wasn't better off. But something happened. That's Mark chapter 5 verse 25. The Bible says when she heard about Jesus. She said to herself. 
if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. We've won because Jesus got the victory for us. We've won. We've won. We are prevailing. We are prevailing. We are prevailing. You must see yourself prevailing every day. This is a month of prevailing and advancement. The children of Israel, it took them many, many years. 400 years plus another 300 years plus another 40 years in the wilderness. Okay, let's stay here. She said, Mark chapter 5 verse 28, for she taught to herself, if I can just do what? Touch his robe. Touch his robe. I will be made whole or healed. Hallelujah. So let's go back to David this morning. Let's, let's look at our story. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let's hear the conversation that took place between the giant and the shepherd. Hallelujah. <laughs> Between the giant and the shepherd. Yes. Remember, before David showed up, there were military men. They had commanders. They had lieutenants. They had captains. They had sergeants. They had colonels. They had um, maybe brigadier, general. They were there in the front to fight the war. But when the man showed up with his height, with his voice, with everything, they were intimidated. These were trained men. But you know the difference between David and those other men was the Spirit of God. That was the difference. So the difference between you and others is your relationship with him. Listen, before we read that, listen to what Paul has to say in regards to the Spirit. In Acts chapter 8, verse 31. Acts chapter 8, we'll, we'll come back to this and we'll try to stay with that by the special grace of God. In Acts chapter 8, verse 31. Then men reply, how can I, uh, not this here. Uh, Paul, where Paul talks about, no, it's Romans, I'm sorry. 831. I'm so sorry. Romans 831. What shall we say about such wonderful things as this? If what? <laughs> David was anointed. The Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. He kept prevailing. He prevailed over lion. He prevailed over the bear. And he prevailed over Goliath. This is why he was able to do that. What shall we say about such wonderful things as this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Look at verse 32. Look at verse 32. Look at verse 32. Hallelujah. If God... Since he did not do what? He did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? Yeah. Wow. Verse 33. Who declares... A cause us whom God has what? God has chosen for his own. No one for God himself has given us right what? Celebrate death. Celebrate the Lord. God has given us right standing with himself. The provision came from God. God gave us the right standing. And that was why David was able to overcome Goliath. So let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 
And let's see what took place between David and Goliath. David accepted the challenge. One day David came home and his father said to him, uh, from verse 20, um, his father said to him, take bread to your brothers and see how they were faring uh, in the war front. And when David got to the place, he had people talking and he had Goliath began to brag and boast. And David said, what shall be done to the man who killed this giant? David was talking based on his encounter with the Holy Ghost. His brother came to him and said, you've come again. Look at you. Aren't you supposed to be watching the sheep? You are here talking about killing Goliath. The Bible says he walked away from there. At the point he said to his brother, is there not a cause? Is there not a purpose for this? This man is insulting God. I can't stand this man insulting God. All right. I read from verse 20. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with the keeper, picked up, the provisions and were just as Jesse had directed him. And he came to the camp encampment as the army was going out in battle formation. In battle formation. Shouting the battle cry. Verse 21. Israel and the Philistine drew up in battle formation. Army against army. Then David left his provision in the care of the supply keeper and ran to the ranks and came and greeted his brother. He was very respectful. Very respectful. Greeted his brothers. Wow. What a courtesy. Verse 23. As he was talking with them, behold the champion. Behold the champion. I'm reading from the Amplified now. It might be different from what is up there. Behold the champion. The Philistines of God named Goliath was coming up from the army of the Philistines and he spoke this same word. He's been talking for days. So he didn't change his word. He did not change his tactics. He was using the same word. They were in formation, in battle. They were ready to go to war. Listen to what he has to say and see how David respond to him. And he was talking with them. Goliath came out, was coming out from the army of the Philistines and he spoke the same words again and David had him. David had him. So when David heard what Goliath was saying, he did something on the inside of David. And David said enough of this insult. You get to a place in your life and you say the enough is enough. You have to say it because you've won already. You can tolerate it for many days, many years and weeks. But you get to a place and you say enough is enough. I'm done with poverty. I'm done with lack. It's not a pleasant place to be. Oh no. Lack raises your blood pressure so high just to meet basic needs so you get to that place and you say enough is enough because you've won already hallelujah gonna run quickly through this so listen to what happened verse 24 when the men of israel all saw the man they did what they fled or they ran from him these are trained men soldiers with due respect to Pastor Nathan, thank you for your service, sir, as a military man. But look at this man. They were trained with all their training. The sight of the man caused them to run from the phase of war. <laughs> and all the men 
children of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, terrified. But look at, look at, just look at the next one, verse 25. Just follow me this morning. This month is a month of prevailing and advancing. This is how you do it. And the Israelites said, have you seen this man? Who has come out? Surely he has come out to defile Israel. And the man who kills him, the king, will enrich with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free from taxes. <laughs> to kill the man. This is what you get. Free. There's no taxes. You don't have to pay taxes for life. This is it. But the men were afraid because they didn't have what it takes to fight Goliath. They were equipped. They were prepared for war. But when war came, they ran away. 22 years ago, we had the privilege of going to Paris Island in South Carolina where the Marine train before they go to deployment. You see men who went in in three months, they were totally transformed and changed completely. Those men were trained. But when it came to battle, <laughs> they forgot all the training. They, they, they have to wake up very early in the morning to go out to exercise. Because the sergeant major will come. We, we saw them. I don't know if my wife remember. We had a friend whose son was coming out from the marine. So that was how I get to know. The sergeant major come. Hold on, hold on, Everybody stand attention. But here now. For them to deploy the assignment, they could not. <laughs> they couldn't do anything. They were afraid of a man. Look, look at what happened. From taxes and service in Israel. Verse 26. Verse 26. Okay, let me, we'll wait for that. Let me read from here. <laughs> Amen. And David said, I love that. And David said to the men standing by him. He wants them to repeat what they just said. He wants to make sure he had them correctly. He said, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and take away the what? You see, the thing about David is taking away the reproach. And that's what Jesus has done for you and me. He took the reproach. He took away poverty. He took away lack. He took away sin, sickness, disease. He took it away. He took it completely. Reproach. It's not a good representation. So David said, I want to take reproach away from Israel. For who is this? Look at David. Look at the response of David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So David moved from physical, natural human to the army of God. He promoted them quickly. Oh, okay. They were men. But as far as David was concerned, they were God's army. But those men did not see themselves like that. I know someday you and I don't feel like it. Even though you belong to God, you've won, you had victory. Some days you wake up, you don't feel like it. You better feel like it. Because like pastors, uh, pastor said this morning, some people woke up this morning, they could not lift up their hands. They could not lift up their leg. They had to be helped from out of it. So look at what David is saying. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that you should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 27. We're going to go down. Then we'll get to a place and take a pause. Hallelujah. And the man told him, Thus it shall be done for the man who kills him. Verse 28. <laughs> Why aren't they doing the same thing? That David was doing. Because they didn't have what David had. 
David had an encounter with God. David had an encounter with the Spirit of God. You and I, you have an encounter with him. Jesus lives on the inside of you. He lives on the inside. He lives in here. He lives. So when you are afraid, you have to tap into what is in here. You have to reach down to what is in here. It's here. It's here. He lives here. He lives here. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside. He lives for it. He lives on the inside. We must tap into it. So that's what David said. Now his brothers. Look at brothers now. Now Eliab, his elder brother, had what he said to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled. How can you be a frab? You're angry with your brother. He's trying to help you to get delivered. Oh my goodness. Against David. And he said, why did you come here? Okay, now you're telling him why did you come here. But you guys fled from the man. He's a preferred solution to your problem. You're asking him why did he come? If he leaves, you're going to be there with Goliath. He said, why did you come here? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? You know, before David left, he left them with the keepers. He secured the animals with the keepers. He didn't just leave and just walk away. No, he left them with the keeper. But the brother didn't know that. With whom have you left those few sheep? The things we are counting on that is going to be our survival line. Why did you leave them and you are here? You are bragging. Okay. I think we're, I think we're getting the sense of the story now. <laughs> In the wilderness, I know your presumption. I know your presumption. I know your presumption. And your evilness of heart. <laughs> For you came down that you for you came down that you what verse 29 this brother is sounding like one of our people from uh, <laughs> from my hometown <laughs> i'm not going to say <laughs> from my hometown not your hometown <laughs> my see the battle oh so you want to come and see that's that's all i know you should get a break is alone with the sheep in the wilderness. Ah, young man, just, just think about it. He's, he had 10, how I many brothers? Maybe 10 or 11 of them. Older brothers. He's the youngest. He's the one who is catering for them. Because he, he takes care of the sheep for them. He comes home to see how dad were faring. And dad said, hey, take food. Go and give to your brother. Nobody was thinking about David. But David was thinking about everybody as a nation. And David said, what have I done? Okay, let me, let me just play something for you. This is older and senior in Nigeria. now. Okay, you didn't get that. Brother, what, senior, what, what have I done? What have I done? What is my crime? And David said, what have I done now? What is not? Was it not a harmless question? What I'm asking you is not, it doesn't have anything to do with, and David turned. Oh, I like this. And David turned. You better don't do that to your Egbo. You, if you turn, Okay, I'm sorry. Those who don't. In, in, in my culture, when an elderly person is talking to you and you turn, the next thing you're going to hear is slap. <laughs> they slap. They slap you whether, you whether you are right or not. They slap. So that's what David said. He did here. So to the brother is an insult. And David turned away from Eliab to another. And he asked. You see what he said? The same question. And again, the man gave him the same answer. So let's go, let's go down. Um, we're just going to go down to where Goliath began to talk to David. And David began to talk. When David's words were heard. When David's words were heard. Look at what happened. And David guarded his sword over his arm, armor. Then he tried to go but could not. 
they took him to Saul. Saul said, okay, you know what? This man is an army. Trained all his life. You, you are a young man. But you see, what they didn't know was David had an encounter with God. This is the difference. He had an encounter with God. Then he tried to go but could not. For he was not used to it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with this. For I am not used to them. And David took them off. He's not used to it. Thank God for David. Verse 41. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Then he took. The Philistine came on and drew near to David. I like that. The man who bore the shield going before him. This is the man that David is going to confront. He had somebody who bear his shield, not Goliath himself. There's another man who carried the shield for the man, for Goliath. And when the Philistines looked around and saw David, he scorned and despised him. <laughs> for he was but an adolescent. Uh oh. Okay. Adolescent, help me. Uh, Mother Tracy, was an adolescent? Is a kid? Almost, no, just say, what's that? Is he a grown up? Is he an adult? No, he's a little boy. Adolescent. Adolescent, okay. Thank you. He's a child with a healthy reddish color. Wow. And a fair face. And look at verse 43. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? Am I a dog? Am I a dog? He's asking. He's asking David. Am I a dog? <laughs> that you should come to me with sticks. And the Philistines caused David by his God. By his God. Gods. By his gods. Then the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh. He's bragging now. I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistines, you come to me with sword, with spear and sword, a javelin, but I come to you. But I come to you. Much has been declared a month of prevailing and advancing. David boldly declared here. Yes, you call me a child, an adolescent. I'm a little kid, you said. But on the inside, I have the greater one. I have in here. That's what David is saying. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Wow. The God of the ranks of army whom you have defiled. You see how David plays the soldiers? David did not classify them to be the soldiers of Israel alone. They were soldiers for God. But those men did not see themselves the way David saw them. David saw differently from the man. That is what you and I have as an advantage. We have to keep seeing differently. If you don't see differently, the result is going to be the same. This day, the Lord will deliver you. Thank you, man. Thank you. The Lord will deliver you into my hand. <laughs> and I will smite you and cut off your head. And I will give the corpse of the army of the, not just, not just Goliath. Not, he said the armies. The army of the Philistines this day to the bots of the air 
and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. We must come to that place. We must come to that place. That in our daily walk with God, men and women, we know that you have a God. It's a living God. You have a 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 God. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves. Not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord. One thing I want to leave with you as a point, as a bullet point, is that you know that the battle is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's not yours. The battle is not yours. Because they are not physical battle. They are spiritual battles. They are not your battle. They are not your battle. Let me, let me give us one more scripture, then we we'll come back to this and close. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and verse 5. The Bible says we walk. We walk not in the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 and 5. Then we we'll come back to this to close. One thing I like to leave with you. Is for you to know that the battle belongs to God. Amen. It's not your battle. Amen. Look at that. For the weapons of our warfare. Are not physical weapons of flesh and blood but they are mighty they are mighty before god for the overthrowing and destructions of strongholds that's what we have look at verse five hmm. in as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that set itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought, where? And we lead every thought and purpose away captive. Oh, you lead those thoughts away captives. You lift those doors. He said, you lift them, you lift them away captive into the obedience of Christ for the Messiah, the anointed one. Hallelujah. So let's go back. I just want to add that to the scripture for us. Amen. Let's go back to that scripture. Then we just finish and see how the battle ended. Who won? We see who won. Number two, you already won. Amen. You already won. Amen. You already won. So let's go back to um, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And we just close from there. We're done with that. Thank you. I'll read from here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you into our hands. David was very confident of what he knew about God. When the Philistines came forward to meet David, David was doing what? David began to advance. The mantle was advancing. Both of them were not just talking. No, just, just imagine. So the battle is left to David and Goliath. So what about the soldiers? <laughs> what about the soldiers? That should, <laughs> that should be enough fuel for them to be able to back David up. They did not back him up. Where's Eliab? Who was challenging David? When the Philistines came forward to meet David, David ran what? He ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistines. He was doing it by the spirit. Not by the flesh. Because he's a young man. He ran forward. Verse 49.
Verse 49. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it and it struck the Philistines sinking into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. All arguments, all obstacles, all challenges before you and before me, they already fell in this month. In the name of Jesus. They already fell in this month. In Jesus' precious name. I say they fell. If David could do these things by the Spirit. Now that we have the Father, the Son, because Jesus said it. He said, when I come, I knock at the door. If you open the door, he said, I and my father, we come into you and sup with you and fellowship with you. So we have God here. We have Jesus here. And we're still afraid. I don't get it. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I get there sometimes. But look at what David did. And David put his hands, okay. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone and struck down the Philistine and slew him. But no sword was in the hand of David. He used the sword of the man. What a victory. What a victory. What a victory. This day as we bring this to a close I want you to know that Jesus has conquered for you and me we have to affirm what God has done for us we have to speak those things we have things come against us we have oppositions we have things from left from right from center all over the place they come against us but thank God for the victory in Jesus that we have Amen. David succeeded because he had an encounter with God. Let's bow our heads as we pray. I just want us to talk to God this afternoon. Till this day, David is still being celebrated as the king of Israel. There is the star of David in the flag Till this day is being celebrated because he was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who believed God, who trusted in God, who knew that God is able to do those things for him. And when the Spirit of God came upon him, there was no doubt in the heart of David. He showcased God, he declared the word of God, he affirms what he believes. Today, I want you to keep the affirmative words of God before your eyes every day because this month has been declared a month of advancement and prevailing. We already prevailed. Just talk to the Lord this morning or this afternoon rather. Just tell him he's already won for you and me. He took care of the battle for us. All we have to do is to go to him and talk with him and worship and thank him for what he has done. Our Father, we thank you this day. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you for what you did through David. David was an instrument in your hand. He was a tool in your hand. This day, we look to you. We thank you for the victory obtained for us. We thank you because we know that the battle is already won. Thank you for the victory of the cross. Thank you for the redemptive grace and power of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to receive 
you as our Lord and personal Savior. We give you praise today. Lord, we go in the light of this truth that we have had this day. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to have your way. Take control of all that we continue to do this day and into this week. To the glory and honor of your name. And Lord, we call to those who are yet to give their heart to you. That they can come now and accept you as their Lord and Savior. Because it tells us in John chapter 3. Except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Lord, we ask this afternoon that men and women will come to you. And confess to you their sins and accept you as their Lord and personal Savior. We thank you. We glorify you. Thank you for the blood and thank you for the name. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. And thank you for the name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.